Hey everybody, welcome to this battery isolator install video. I would like to be able to charge the house batteries from the engine without draining the ignition battery. I have a way to activate a solenoid, but that solenoid is having problems and is intermittently not working. So instead of replacing the solenoid, I'm going to go with this 12 volt battery isolator by Battery Doctor. It's 150 amp, which will be plenty since my alternator only puts out 105 amps. Also got some lugs, four gauge lugs with a 5 16 inch hole. Might be too small in some cases, but it's always easier just to drill out a bigger hole than have a, a lug that's too big. And also got some four gauge wire. And of course I got my hydraulic crimp tool. The die sizes for sizes of wires. So if you guys need a chart, there it is. Starting from the biggest 2 aught at 70 millimeter down to the 12 gauge at 4 millimeter squared. So, going from the alternator, I'm going to tap in right here at its output. You can see it just had this dinky little 10 gauge to charge the chassis battery and run um, headlights, accessory fans, the front heater, core fan, the back heater fan. Um, all the lights, turn signals, everything, and also charge the house batteries through a 10 gauge. So that's just kind of ridiculous. So I'm going to tap in right here where this is attached to and just run the 4 gauge to the battery doctor to the battery bank. I'll also attach a ground up here just to make sure I have a good solid ground dedicated just for the house batteries. Would probably okay just using chassis ground, but there's a lot of places that. I don't know, just to play on the safe side, I'm going to run a separate ground up from up here as close to the alternator as I can get. It actually looks like there's a bolt right there. And I'll go through the carpet here after I drill a couple holes, turn the 4 gauge through, and I'll put the battery doctor right to this. Just so I can keep an eye on it charging and easy to get to if I ever need to jump the chassis battery or give it a boost. Alright, got a couple holes drilled with the step bit. it is. So that's your mounting options. I am going to just do this. Alright, I just need to touch the ground. Not right there, obviously. I just, I don't know why I did that. I'm just curious what size this is. You could probably just take out one of these down here. Oh, I'll find a spot. Alright, for the 4 gauge lug, we got out a 25 millimeter die.
first wire, I'm going to go from the alternator to the battery isolator. Threw some electrical tape on there to clean things up and make the uh, surface area that's conductive smaller. Less likely to have something arc out across those parts. Alright, put a couple of lugs. Training roll of wire uh, lugged up and taped. I'm going to run this down to the batteries and cut this off where I need it and add two more lugs. Alright, first connection is made. Ground wire going to the battery bank. Just need to run that straight to it. Positive will go up the isolator and then from that we'll run alongside this into the cabinet. Alright, got the uh, device grounded down here. Just in between the two holes I made for the cables to go through. my new charging cables. Sweet. Get some lugs on. Sure, we get the cables placed, or I can still get the vent caps off. Do something like that. Just to get that one, yeah. Yeah. Charge them with the engine with uh, much more appropriately sized wires. Can't believe all that was going through that little 10 gauge. I gotta check my fluids. All done. I'll go around after I test it and seal up these gaps here. Directions that red light will be on. 
until a certain voltage is met. So let's start her up and see if it works. quick. Didn't give much time for my ignition battery to charge, but maybe it's... Off though. Okay, so this is not something I suggest buying, and I'm not even going to put the link down below. It's a piece of trash, kind of a gimmick. Um, the only thing that that is is a relay, and I could have just replaced mine easily, cheaper. And Well, I like that this is relocated with bigger cable, so I would have had to put it in here, which is fine. I'd end up doing the same thing, run a little wire to a switch, and that's what I'm going to end up doing. The only thing it's good for now is just an indicator when it's charged. But it clicks on right away. I don't know if maybe that would act a little different if I attached the cable, the main uh, input down at the battery. Maybe it would sense the battery voltage a little better. But you can see here on my voltage meter, um, the alternator just bumps up the volts right to 14.7 right away. So I don't, it's kind of idiotic whoever programmed this to turn on at 13.7 at a charged um, ignition battery. There's no way to tell that because the alternator is putting in a bunch of power. Perhaps my uh, alternator is putting is a uh, heavier duty than this was expecting to have. Maybe it's used to having small alternators that don't bump up the voltage so much. I don't know. I'm just assuming things. But it's a gimmick. It doesn't really do anything. Um, it's still kind of cool to have the little charging indicators. Let me know when things are charged. And I'm just going to run a ground wire up and over to a switch. And then I think I will even attach that ground wire to a relay in the normally open position and attach that to ground so that this cannot be grounded once the relay is attached to my accessory on and then it won't even turn on um, you know as soon as I turn the key off this will turn off and then the switch I will keep off until that's um, like I'll start up the engine and let that run for 30 minutes and then I'll flip the switch on it, so I'm basically back to what I was doing in the first place but I did replace my finicky um, broken solenoid which wasn't working it, it was like 10 times or one time out of 10 of flicking it on and off it would engage and start charging the battery so it was a pain in the butt um, but yeah save some money just get the solenoid replacement um, or get a, an appropriate battery isolator this is not isolating the ignition battery it was having a very hard time starting after that last clip of just charging uh, the batteries together it, didn't work. Drained my ignition battery and made it hard to start. But there it is. Project's always fun. Like I said, the process is just like before. Didn't really help anything. Flip it on, start the engine, let the engine run for about 30 minutes, charge the uh, chassis battery back up, then flip it off while it's running still, and then connect that, and we'll charge the house batteries without sucking all the power out of my ignition battery. Yeah. 